Understanding data structure and flow of an algorithm is absolutely necessary if you want to develop a successful deep learning model. Deep learning models are like the black box. It is hard to find out what is going on inside them. And that is why it is so important to gain insight into model building. With visualization you can find out which parameters you need to change in order to improve model performance. In our previous videos uh, we presented some empirical uh, ways to visualize and evaluate uh, our neural networks. We saw that evaluation of machine learning model can be performed using measurement data such as loss, accuracy, histograms and more. And now we will look at much more accurate tool to visualize the model. It is one of the best tools used for visualization and understanding the flow of a machine learning algorithm knows, known as TensorBoard. So what is TensorBoard? Well, TensorBoard is a visualization tool for machine learning. Uh, it can be used to track metrics such as loss, and accuracy, uh, visualize model graphs and histograms and it has many more functionalities. And one very useful thing about TensorBoard is that it provides, uh, uh, provides us a visualization of a model architecture. So let's now see, see this uh, TensorBoard in action. For our experiment, we already created the LANET5 classifier. As we already explained in our previous videos, uh, the main goal of LANET5 is to recognize handwritten digits. And it takes a grayscale image with dimensions of 32 by 32 pixels. Uh, to train the model, uh, we are going to use the Fashion MNIST dataset, which consists of 10 classes. And here you can see we already downloaded the Fashion MNIST dataset. Uh, okay. So to be able to use TensorBoard, we, we first need to install it. And for that, we will use uh, the pip installation command. So let's run this. Okay, now TensorBoard is installed and next uh, we need to import the necessary libraries. So let's run this part also. And then uh, we will define a variable called devices, which will store uh, a CPU or GPU depending on uh, what we are training on. So let's run this also. Okay, uh, and now it's time for the interesting part. Uh, let's see how to use a tensor board. First uh, thing that we need to do is to import class called uh, summary. Uh, summary writer uh, and this class uh, is uh, your main entry to the log data for the consumption and visualization uh, by TensorBoard okay and then we'll create an object called writer here uh, uh, and uh, here we will call uh, when we create uh, this object we will call the summary writer class uh, and by default all the data will be logged inside the folder called, called runs and however we will create another folder inside runs called amnist so 
let's run this and see what we'll get and here you can see the folder runs and inside of this folder is another folder called amnist okay next we are going to iterate through through the test loader and extract one batch of images but before that we will download the fashion MNIST dataset here we will specify the classes okay and here we can uh, iterate uh, iterate to test loader and extract one batch of images also here we plotted these six images from our data set and now we are going to visualize our images so first thing that we need to do is to create an image grid so we will say uh, image grid is equal and here we will call uh, torchvision.utilis uh, and make grid function and here as a parameter we will uh, just pa pass our data And then we will call our writer and we will say add image. Uh, and this this function uh, will uh, add uh, image grid that we created to the tensor board. And here, uh, as a parameters, we need to uh, uh, provide label for our images. So we will said, uh, we will say m nist images, and we also need to provide image grid. also we need to close our writer so we will say writer dot close okay let's call this piece of code okay here I made mistake Okay, and now uh, uh, we are going to add. We need to add extension uh, to our uh, TensorBoard extension to our uh, Google Colab notebook, and we can do that with the following function. We will uh, say load load extension, and we will say TensorBoard. And also, we need to uh, we need to add this folder runs that we already created to this extension. So we can do this did this with the function tensorboard and board, and we will just say log dir and runs
Okay, and now we can see our images. Uh, here we can see 8 by 8 grid, uh, and this is equal to 64, and that is because uh, we specified our batch size to be 64. Another very interesting thing that uh, we can visualize using using uh, TensorBoard is uh, architecture of our model. So here we can see our structure of our model, and after calling our model, our optimizer, and criterion, also here we, uh, we are using learning uh, rate scheduler. Uh, we can apply a same code to uh, to visualize uh, our model architecture. So we will s again call writer dot, and we will uh, here we will type the function add graph. And as a parameters, we need to put our model and again our data. So here again, we will say we need to close our writer object. So we will say writer dot close. And now we will use the command tensorboard log d runs and we will load the folder runs into the tensorboard. Okay, here we have our tab images. And as you can see, another tab in tensorboard called graphs appear. And we can click on this tab. Uh, and the graph of our, our model will appear. And here you can see uh, the details of the entire pipeline. And to collect more information about your model, you just double click on any of these icons on the graph. So we can click on input, and we can click our, our, our model. And also we can click on convolutional layers. And in this way you can uh, gain an insight about every little detail of your model. Okay. And now we are ready to train the model. We are going to train for 20 epochs. And after every training, our goal is to measure our training loss and training accuracy. So let's see how we can visualize training loss and accuracy with TensorBoard. So after writing our uh, training loop, we are going to call writer class again, as you can see here. Uh, however, this time we will use the function called add scalar, scalar, uh, and as parameters to, the, to this function, we will pass the variables uh, total train loss uh, that we created here. So, uh, total train accuracy, total train loss, total test accuracy, and total test loss. Uh, and as you can see, we are saving the accuracy for training and testing. Uh, after each two epochs. Uh, the important thing to not, uh, note uh, is that uh, lots of Im information can be logged for one experiment and to avoid clustering we can group plots by naming them hierarch hierarchically. Uh, so let's say for example here we have uh, accuracy training and accuracy testing and these will, will uh, these uh, will be grouped together so let's now train our network network 
and see our results and now we can see that a new tab called scalars has popped up so we can click on that tab uh, and we can see that all gra graphs uh, that we created are added to the tensor, tensor board so by, by placing the, the mouse on the graph uh, we can uh, check the value and the epoch epoch uh, that uh, value is uh, is captured at so here we can see the value is uh, 0 0.8756 and this is a 12th epoch uh, and also uh, we have one more option option here uh, we can change the smoothness of, of this line uh, just by clicking and sliding on the uh, smoothing slider okay uh, in this way we, we separated uh, our four graphs but if we want to see how they overlap uh, for example uh, uh, testing and uh, training accuracy we can visualize them uh, on one just one plot and we can see this plot here so in the code we can just again uh, call I, our uh, writer uh, class and we can just uh, change function add scalar to add scalars uh, and here uh, in a brackets we will just uh, pass a dictionary of what we want to visualize on a plot so here we have loss uh, and training and testing loss on one plot and training and testing accuracy on an another plot and here we can see them and also we can check the, the value for each epoch So, by using this method, we can clearly see how uh, training and testing uh, loss and accuracy compare to each other. So, in this video, we learned how to use a tensor board in PyTorch. If you like this video, uh, please uh, click, y you can drop a like and subscribe to our channel. Bye.